If there was one magical power that I could say I've conquered it for this entire life, I swear that magical power would be shifting timelines. The ability to quantum leap whenever I wanted to. Knowing that I have the true autonomy, the power to step into any realities I wanted at any given time. And that's why I've been very fascinated by the concept of manifestation, especially instant manifestation. I almost didn't want to believe that you could literally do nothing and manifest abundance, wealth, love and happiness. But these days, I realize that the most wisest path for you to take is the path of least resistance. So today, we're going to debunk the concept of quantum jumping or quantum leaping from your old shitty reality so that we can finally command the things that we want and stop settling for 5 out of 10 people, circumstances and shitty things that we are no longer aligned to. Okay, so this is Patty again and without further ado, let's get started. So the first key to really doing that quantum leaping is to actually be aware of what is truly making us pin ourselves down to our old reality. And those things are usually our core foundational beliefs. Like every other coaches on YouTube say, it's all about rewiring your subconscious mind. But it's very interesting that even though I intellectually understood that we needed to flood our subconscious with affirmation tracks and loop all these positive inner dialogues in our brain. But even when I tried to do that, as long as I was still confining myself in the environment that made me feel triggered, annoyed and frustrated, it was still really, really hard to shift my timeline. So instead of me telling you generic things like, well, just loop your affirmations for a hundred times in the exact location that doesn't inspire you, I'm going to encourage you to physically take yourself out of the comfortable confines that makes you feel like, well, this whole environment defines me. So for example, my family had settled in the west of Sydney. And even though the suburb is actually quite nice around here, but I always felt inferior to people who are from eastern suburbs or northern beaches. And it's all got to do with this socioeconomic status where if you are from this particular location, you are ultimately more inferior than those who are born into wealth or just grew up near the beach and had this abundant lifestyle where a lot of things are accessible to them. If you are defining your identity as I was born in a less affluent area. My environment is limiting. Everything seems to confine me to have a mediocre life. I want you to find the time to physically take yourself out of this little confine and go and immerse yourself in the exact environments that makes you see yourself differently. Because as long as you still do your meditations, affirmations or breath work in the exact location that makes you feel triggered every day, it is gonna be extremely hard for you to rewire your subconscious mind. However, if you start to create physical evidences that show to yourself, okay, I'm starting to dip my foot near the ocean water more often. I'm starting to conquer my swimming. I'm starting to embody the lifestyle of the affluent. It is normal for me to be near the beach. It is normal for me to walk past affluent homes because since the exact things that we crave so much is the physical experience that we came here on earth to experience, that we might as well do our very best to immerse ourselves completely in the new reality that we want to experience experience. Moving on to the next point, internal dialogues. Now, of course, you understand the concept of speak positively to yourself, but I'm reminding you again that if you choose to stay in the confines of the less affluent area, the less abundant environment where everywhere you see is just the same old, it is really hard for you to be like, oh, the world is so beautiful, life is so beautiful, when everything you're seeing right now is shittiness, right? So before you start to tell yourself things like, I am beautiful, I am radiant, life is beautiful, every day is magical, I still want to encourage you to first put yourself on that beach, on that wharf where you see the glistening ocean water and the beautiful pink sky, or you want to take yourself to a beautiful cafe, somewhere with beautiful romantic ambience and make yourself feel pampered. Because once you start producing those experiences in the 3D, the internal dialogue will actually come automatically. When you put yourself in environments where you feel safe, where you feel like, oh, this ambience feels so right. I feel cozy here. I feel safe here. Now it's going to be easier for you to say to yourself, 
Life is beautiful. The universe has my back. Everything is safe. Simply because you're taking the right actions to prove to yourself that you're quantum leaping your reality. So back in the days, I was constantly looping this affirmation of, we have to work nine to five to have a stable living. I have to get this kind of job in order to be a successful adult. Because our socioeconomic status, our society and what we do as a living is not as abundant as other people, I don't deserve to craft my offer and charge thousands of dollars for it. I have to actually trade my hourly rate for money. And even worse, if I ever come across a rich person, regardless if they are traumatized or not, I always have to be that person that they trauma dump on, the person that makes other people feel better in order to feel like I am worthy of being in an affluent surrounding. Every single time I completed my long swims, especially about 1000 meters, that's when those internal dialogues feel extremely real. Whether it's things like, well, you are invincible girl, you are a super girl. And those actions that I just did is an evidence that, oh yeah, this is really happening. That is when your reality is starting to really quantum leap, right? So let's just say you want to manifest a certain dollar figure. Instead of you being like, well, I'm going to sit in this shitty room and I'm going to loop my affirmations and say, I am rich, I am rich, I am rich. I'm going to manifest this. The least resistant path to really take is to actually understand when I receive that payment, where will I first invest that money to give myself the most fulfilling life experiences ever? Because if we don't use $1,000 wisely, we could splurge it on bees and alcohol, or we can invest $1,000 in our well-being on certain vacation experiences, on certain access to ocean water pools, or the actual swimming pools with all the spas and saunas that makes you feel pampered. It all depends on how you're gonna invest that money. And if you know exactly where that money is gonna go that makes your soul light up, then you wanna reverse engineer and be like, well, where is that actual thing located? If it's at the beach, then you physically take yourself to the beach. And while you are at the beach, now you start to rewire your subconscious with internal dialogues and tell yourself, life is abundant, I am rich, money is coming now. And how are we gonna feel? Your vibration is gonna raise so much more higher and the chances of you really believing that positive inner dialogue is gonna be so much more higher. Which now leads to self-concept. Our core belief creates our self-concept, but our internal dialogue is what influences those core beliefs. And we've tackled these two things already. So if you truly want to nail your self-concept, you have to be extremely clear that once I receive this payment, am I gonna spend it on alcohol? Am I gonna spend it on fake coaches and healers because I don't feel healed? Am I gonna spend it on therapists who may not be able to understand exactly how I feel what I'm going through? Because there are therapists like that, to be honest. Or am I gonna use that money to take myself to the exact environment where my soul is dancing? Whether it's a balcony home near the beach, whether it's the ocean water, whether it's a beautiful play, anywhere that makes your soul dance, where are you going to take yourself to? Once that money comes, where's your first transaction gonna go? Because when you don't have the money now, can you still physically take yourself near that environment so you can first experience that beautiful feeling where I'm soaking in the ambience of the beautiful play. I'm soaking in the ocean water, the smell of the fresh sea salt, the way it feels on my skin. I am laughing with the seagull, sitting on the wharf and watching the beautiful sky turn from light blue to pink to purple and then to black with a beautiful full moon rising as well. Do you see how we don't actually want the money figure to sit in our bank account, but we want access to these experiences. And the more frequently you open the door for yourself to access these experiences, that's when you identify yourself as a completely different person. So let's just say, okay, I'm deciding, I'm a 10 out of 10 chick. I embody my dream girl energy. So once a week, I'm gonna find a way to go immerse myself near the ocean water and I'm gonna increase my laps. I'm gonna start shedding and have a very beautiful bikini body. Now your soft concept is gonna be like, well, I'm a 10 out of 10 chick with a fit body. I am high value because I'm capable of achieving my goals while raising my vibration at the same time. So do you see that self-concept is not just about, okay, I'm gonna affirm a hundred times in my head, I'm a fit girl, I'm a fit girl, I'm a fit girl. But then your outside action is that, okay, I'm gonna stay at home, I'm gonna be miserable at home, and then I'm gonna get a packet of chip and eat it all. That is not shifting your self-concept. 
Shifting your soul concept is actually bridging that timeline between the current self and the future self by taking specific actions that make you feel like, oh yeah, I'm embodying her right now. It feels so right because all I'm seeing now is fit, healthy people. All I'm seeing is smiles, laughter, happiness, and love. And now I'm starting to become the embodiment of that because this is the new normal for me. And now I identify myself as being abundant and loving because everywhere that I'm seeing, love and abundance and wealth is an extension of me. Now in the past, I had a very hard time cultivating this state because what would actually happen is that I would start to look at people who may be in much harder life situations. They don't have the exact visa to be in Australia. They don't have Australian citizenship. They always have to spend money on visa renewal. And the only way they can earn money is to work in hospitality jobs. And when they rent, they actually have to share with nine extra people in one single room. And now you're thinking like, well, if that person has this life and I'm more closer to people who has this life, Therefore, it's not possible for me to quantum leap and identify myself as the beach girl, the abundant, loving, wealthy girl. And I'm going to remind you that everybody is in a different reality and it is none of your business how other people are living. If you already have access to certain things, you have to build onto that experience because when you start to build your wealth, when you start to be more happier, everybody in your environment is going to benefit from that. You never have to look at yourself and be like, well, I'm Asian. I'm not like them. I'm a different race to them. I don't live in that suburb. I'm not in a socioeconomically higher class. I am in a middle class. I'm in an average environment. So therefore I don't identify my self concept to be that chick who makes a lot of money and who lives a beautiful, lavish, wealthy lifestyle, which then comes down to the elimination process. Get rid of everything and everyone that doesn't align to the new reality that you wish to quantum leap to. So my parents have owned a Thai restaurant for more than 20 years. They've sold it now, but for the last 20 years, I was always identifying myself as I am my parents' daughter. My parent owns a Thai restaurant. So therefore I also have to help at the Thai restaurant. And there were so many times where when I go and help at the restaurant, if you talk about the beach, the seagull, the Bondi icebergs and all these things, it's like this little barrier where, what are you on about, Patty? This is life. This is our Thai people's life in Australia. Whatever you're talking about is like alien language to me. And I used to feel like, damn, Am I gonna even have friends? Because the things that I want seem very alien to the people in my past. And when I was in my 20s, there was also people in my 20s that would be working at the restaurants. And majority of the time, the things that they would kind of talk about is, oh, my family is ill, this person's in debt, this person is cheating, my boyfriend's cheating, I think. I think he's seeing somebody else. Oh, this is trouble here, there's his trouble there. And over the long periods of time, I started to absorb this as my new reality. So I'd be like, well, how do I quantum leap to a new reality when it doesn't feel possible? And the reason why it doesn't feel possible is because you are still spending majority of your time physically in a place where people are not talking about the things that you want to embody. If sickness, death, poverty, cheating, divorce, and all these things is not something that you want in your reality, you must try your very best to avoid immersing yourself in an environment where these topics is a normal conversation. You don't have to make gossiping about other people and listening to negativities and news be the dominant part of your reality. And the very interesting thing is that my mom would be really into Thai news. And she's been listening to the Thai news since I was a child for almost every day. And what I'm starting to see from her is that her thought patterns and inner dialogue is a reflection of what she's consuming, which is shitty Thai news. And I'm trying to say to her, well, we live in Australia. Why are those news relevant to our lives? And then she would get really pissed off if I bring this up. But the minute I distance myself away from this whole environment, I stop trying to change other people. I allow them to be. That's when my reality started truly shifting. So you have to be aware that you can't stop somebody from talking about divorces cheating, poverty, sadness, and all these things. You can't force your boyfriend, your family members, or your friends to change, but you can always let them go. If they don't serve your new reality, you must be strong enough to walk your highest path and allow the people that want their version of their life 
to have that life. But you're not gonna take people who will bring you down, who will keep you stuck in this practical reality that you don't want to be in. And you're gonna choose to make different sets of decisions that will make you the 10 out of 10 chick with a beautiful dream girl energy who has true autonomy over her life. And finally, we're gonna look at this concept of the lucky girl syndrome, her habits, her thought patterns, her subconscious belief, and all the things that she will do to manifest her dream life. Now, quantum leaping your reality is pretty much about making instantaneous shifts, internal shifts inside of you that will then be pushed out to your reality. Every single time I go into YouTube to understand this logically, it's like many people would say the same thing in a different delivery manner. And what I'm trying to share with you is that everyone is walking on different paths in life. If you are at a stage where manifestation is foreign to you, you don't actually believe in this whole law of attraction and that our thoughts become things, or you don't really buy into this whole, if we assume something, then that thing is gonna happen. Then what I want you to understand at least is the characteristics of the lucky girl syndrome. And then when I start to speak to my dad these days that he's now a chef at a restaurant, he would also say to me, luckily I got this job. I am lucky that I got to work at this particular place. The hours are good, the starting time is good, it is close to the home, the working conditions are good because he says, I am lucky. And that is my 56 year old Asian dad who even believes in this whole, I am lucky, even though it's not lucky girl syndrome for him. Maybe lucky man syndrome. So I want you to understand that a part of shifting reality is to also believe in luck. Not in a way where you're gonna do nothing and you're gonna wait for something to fall onto your lap, but in a way where you trust that there are bigger and higher divine powers that are waiting to support you to reach your goals when you are energetically aligned to receive it. And that comes to also raising your vibration. Now you may ask me, well, how the hell do I really raise my vibration? And again, it's all about physically putting yourself in environments where your soul feels ignited, where you feel like everything is perfect in this current moment and there is nowhere to escape to, whether it's your Instagram page, whether it's through a YouTube video. There is nowhere you want to be at because this current moment is perfect. Raising your vibration and being lucky goes hand in hand. So if you ever find yourself in a position where I am working so damn hard, but it's not manifesting. If there is a bucket list of all the things I have to do, I've ticked them all off. But all these wins, these abundances, and all these rewards are not coming into my life. And that is because you are holding on to your old identity. And as long as you hold on to your old beliefs that says, I am never the lucky girl, then you won't be able to quantum leap into the new reality. So if there's anything that I want you to take away from this video, is that I want you to actually believe in luck, that you can be a lucky girl, that not everything has to be figured out all by yourself. Even though you still have to take certain sets of action that physically put yourself in nourishing environment, that makes it easier for you to affirm positive affirmations, that makes it easier for you to believe that, oh yeah, I am a winner, because there's tons of little wins that you've already created. Now, you don't wanna be like, actually, I got lucky this whole time, but you wanna actually believe that because I've done part of the work, Therefore, luck is also on my side. So in a way, it's kind of like this harmonious co-creation where you do the work, but you also allow yourself to let go and receive. Because in this way, when there's no more energetic blocks, when there's no more war between you and the universe, now it's like you're asking the universe, I want to swim 20 laps. The universe will help strengthen you to be able to maintain your focus in the ocean water and be able to complete your 20 laps because you believe that you are the lucky girl that today doesn't have to rain. Today, the environment is set for you to win. And that is how you quantum leap into a new reality. Okay guys, so this is the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed it. This is Past Platform and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.